Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. We hope you enjoy listening to this podcast of St. Louis on the Air, brought to you by University College at Washington University. With undergraduate and graduate programs, part-time, evening, and online. University College at Washington University, offering world-class education within reach. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. A national climate report issued last Friday drew an ominous portrait of environmental issues resulting from climate change and painted what could be a bleak picture for Missouri and the Midwest. It predicts more storms, drought, heat, flooding, and diminished air quality. Our science reporter Eli Chen has been on the story and joins me in studio, along with John Hickey, the director of the Missouri Sierra Club. Thank you both for being with us. Nice to have you. Yeah, Thanks, thank Don. you. Well, Eli, I'll start with you. The report shows that Missouri can be damaged in many ways as climate change continues. Yeah, and some of the consequences are things that we're very familiar with, like increased flooding and hotter temperatures. But this report puts uh, real you know, dollar numbers on, um, on how much it will cost us. So, for example, the report notes that climate change could cost you know, the, region's comp- uh, the region's economy by $10 billion by the middle of the century due to premature deaths and lost work hours. And, you know, as storms intensify and become more frequent in the, in the Midwest, um, scientists are expecting that it could cost us maybe five, over $500 million by the end of the century. Mm-hmm. John, why was, is the Midwest uh, is so vul- vulnerable? Well, partly because our electric utility here in the St. Louis area, Ameren, has been so slow to adopt clean energy. Mm-hmm. So we have dirty air, and when temperatures are higher that dirty air is more impactful on human health. So, for example, the city of St. Louis has triple the rate of childhood asthma visits to the emergency room than the state average. And so we're seeing a a layering over effects of hotter temperatures from climate change plus dirty air means more childhood asthma. Eli, in reading your story, uh, it seems that agriculture stands to take perhaps the biggest hit Yeah, so the authors concluded that agricultural productivity could plummet to levels um, last seen in the 1980s without major technological advances, and that would be by mid-century. And in in what way would they specifically be affected? Certainly, they're able to plant crops, but unable to grow them sufficiently. Right. They're, again, um, going back to increased flooding and hotter temperatures. Mm -hmm. So the the report notes that there are certain uh, temperature thresholds at which um, corn and soybean will fail to grow and fail to reproduce. And it's expected that um, some of our hottest temperatures during the summer will hit those levels. So, go ahead. Oh, um, I was going to add, um, you know, in terms of flooding, I I did talk to a farmer um, in northwest um, Missouri, and uh, he's the president of the Missouri Farmers Union, Richard Oswald, and he said that he's, you know, already seeing changes um, in his backyard. Um, He lives three miles from the Missouri River, and, um, you know, his harvest is taking much longer this year. The river is pretty high, and, um, you know, it's hurting him and other people financially. Did you find any uh, any, uh, farmers who uh, deny climate change is happening? Um, I didn't go that far into the reporting, but um, it seems like there are actually plenty of farmers um, in Missouri who, you know, do see the effects of climate change happening where they live. John, what do you make of the the, the whole denier movement? Uh, It it, it continues. It's being, I think, aided somewhat by our president who said such things as uh, people like him with high levels of intelligence don't buy into this. Well, I actually, rather than trusting Donald Trump, I trust the 300 top federal scientists who wrote the climate assessment, the National Climate Assessment. They are the top experts in the whole country on this. They agree. I think one thing that's true is it's hard for people to understand things that aren't in their financial self-interest. Trump is raising a lot of money from the fossil fuel industry, so he, if he actually believed the federal scientists, 
it'd be harder for him to bankroll his mm-hmm. campaigns with oil money, gas money, coal money. Yeah. Eli, back to you with regard to uh, some of the reporting you've done. Uh, many people, I don't think, think of it this way in terms of what uh, impact it could have on infrastructure, and yet that is an issue. Yeah, so the report noted a lot of um, costs to you know, roads and power lines being down from, say, things like natural disasters. Um, there's there's a lot that, um, you know, that goes into maintaining, um, you know, America's infrastructure. And that could be really tested by, you know, flooding and hotter temperatures in the future. They talk about uh, if we get a lot more rain that, uh, that, you know, our sewer system would be hard pressed to really keep up with if that were the case. I mean, it's already, um, you know, of uh, St. Louis, for example, is going through a huge overhaul of its um, combined sewer system, mm. and um, I think that's going to be that's going to be a challenge uh, continuing the future. John, your your thoughts on that part of the story? Uh, that's exactly right. We're spending billions of dollars to fix stormwater runoff in Missouri and in the St. Louis area now, but while we're spending these billions, we're actually making the problem worse through climate change because we'll have more severe weather events. And as the sewer system is overloaded, that means flooded basements, that means flooded cities, uh, and that costs all of us lots of money. You know, we ought to make this point uh, because it comes up uh, every, every time we discuss this issue, and that is that uh, when we have a particularly cold day, people will say, well, yeah, so much for climate uh, change and for global, global warming. We should point out that that's not really what this is all about, that uh, we're talking about extremes in, in weather. Yeah, and trends. 16 of the last 17 years are the hottest uh, of years on record. So you might have a day that's cold here or uh, something like that, but you've got to look at the whole trend over the all 365 days over the country. Yeah. yeah, well, I want to add that, you know, it's a matter of differentiating what weather is and versus yeah. what climate is. And climate is always going to be measured over the long term. So that's something um, that's something to note. Yeah, weather basically pertains to a, a smaller geographic area. Yeah. We have some people wanted to uh, get into this conversation. Let's do that. Uh, I think it's Eric calling from St. Louis has been waiting. Eric, uh, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I am very much a believer that climate change is happening, and I do think it is going to be having terrible consequences over the long term. Uh, my, my biggest fear is the mass extinction, because a lot of species are niche species that don't have time to adapt. But I do think that the advocates of this cause or the proponents of the cause would g- garner more credibility if they would admit that all, a massive change like this is going to have both positive and negative consequences, and there are actually some upsides to climate change as much as people seem to be unwilling to admit it. For example, I can imagine that extremely northern areas would benefit from climate change, like Canada and Siberia, and the scientific community would put out uh, overall cost and uh, cost-benefit analysis of climate change, still showing perhaps that it's bad on the whole, they might get less skepticism because they'd be appearing to be more objective and not only reporting the negative. All right, Eric, thanks uh, Thanks for the call. Uh, John, I'll turn this over to you. Um, I, I can't imagine people in the uh, way up north are too happy with all that melting ice. I, I don't <clears throat> think so. I know that the... Uh, People in northern Alaska are used to being able to drive over the tundra because it's frozen. Now it's not frozen. It's mud, and they can't get around. And so warmer temperatures in Alaska and Canada are not something that all the residents up there are enjoying. I suppose, Eric, that there's people right now in Florida who right now don't have beachfront property. And as the oceans rise, all of a sudden they'll have beachfront property for a couple years until they're underwater, too. So you could say they would get some benefit in the short term, but I think that is a small uh, recompense for the overall negative impacts. We also hear, Eli, that uh, something else could be going on with, uh, with this melting, the permafrost, for instance, that there are a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, former life buried underground, and as the thaw 
uh, as the thaw continues, they could unleash viruses that we haven't even heard of yet that uh, that existed once but no more, and we'd have no way to fight them. Um, so I don't really know too much about yeah. that topic, to be honest. Yeah. Since I it came up on the program the other day, it was fascinating. Yeah, um, I will say that I did have um, so I did have coffee the other day with a um, with a guy who studies. Um, Bugs, and you know, he was trying to direct my attention to the recent New York Times cover um, cover piece of the magazine about how uh, insects are declining because of climate change, and Mm -hmm. I think that's bad. When you know the um, the things that the things that are you know working to keep our environment stable, you know, are being completely thrown off. Well, some of the literature indicates that that we'd have a a greater problem with pests, uh, such as you've just mentioned here, through climate change, than we have now. Uh, sorry, could you rephrase that question? Yeah, basically, that uh, there would be an increase in the number of pests, the you know, animal life. Oh, that, yeah. right. Yeah. So, um, in the agriculture section of the National Climate Assessment, it talked about how increased humidity is likely to bring on you know more pests, and again, it goes back to you know this is going to cost farmers way more in terms of trying to fight these pests. Mm-hmm. And if I could jump in there, the National Climate Assessment. Uh, finds that in the Midwest, we should expect a doubling of the rate of West Nile virus in our area by 2050 because of the increase in the number of mosquitoes that come along with the higher temperatures. And I think anybody who spends much time outdoors in Missouri knows that we have a much longer tick season than we had before. And a longer tick season means more Lyme disease, more ehrlichiosis, more Rocky Mountain spotted fever, And so these disease vectors are going to really increase as the rate of climate change increases. Go ahead. No, I was going to add, add, as someone who goes out frequently hiking around Missouri, it makes me very nervous, Uh you know, hearing that, you know, tick-borne diseases are on the rise. Um, You know, I... I pretty feverishly spray myself in bug spray every time I go out now. Well, you should, and everybody should, No, needless to say. Let's take another call. Jed uh, is calling from St. Peter's. Jed, thanks for waiting. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, I'm calling because a lot of the onus for solving climate change seems to be put on the average person with recycling, reducing our carbon footprint. Uh, But it's well known that the majority of pollution comes from major corporations. So my question is really, what can we do about that? John? Well, one thing is reward those corporations who are doing the right thing. So Microsoft just opened a big new center in St. Louis City at the Cortex that will include 300 new jobs. Microsoft sources all its electricity from clean energy. But it's not just the the new tech companies who are doing that. Anheuser-Busch here in the city of St. Louis, runs all of its breweries around the country on 100% clean energy. So pay attention to which corporations are doing the right thing as well as which corporations are doing the wrong thing. I mentioned Ameren Electric earlier that operates four coal plants in the St. Louis area. It is the biggest carbon emitter in the whole St. Louis area, and I would encourage folks to talk to their electric utility and let them know that you want to see Ameren move to clean energy. Isn't Ameren mandated to produce a certain amount of uh, electricity and electric power through uh, solar and and wind energy? Yeah, we had a statewide vote in November of 2008 where Missourians voted overwhelmingly to ask our electric utilities and require them to move to clean energy. The problem is that those numbers, that was 10 years ago, and now many utilities have far surpassed those goals but Ameren is really the laggard if you look at electric utilities in our state. Let's take another call. We're we'll bringing Carolyn calling from University City. Carolyn, you're on the air. Um, hi. Uh, thanks so much for having this program. Uh, my question was uh, about the uh, farmers and their, you know, they are on the front line there in a way uh, in, with the impacts of climate change. I wondered if there was any realization among farmers that um, – have their lands close to the Missouri River, that it would be helpful to set back levees to create a wider floodplain given the uh, fact that rainfall is likely to increase and especially uh, increasing through intense storms. Anyone of you two would like to take that? Eli? Um, So I haven't spoken to enough farmers to know if – 
if you know there is a push for you know more um, I guess levy setbacks. Um, I was talking to a national wildlife refuge um, or the manager of a refuge some months ago about you know their efforts to do that because uh, flooding along the Mississippi has been so great. But it is an interesting point to bring up. That would be a heck of a project, John, wouldn't it, to have to do that? It'd be expensive, but it would uh, mean that farmers would not be losing money trying to plant fields that then flood. Mm -hmm. And that what what maybe didn't flood often over the last 50 years, in the next 50 years, may be flooding much more often and therefore both costing the farmers more money as well as costing taxpayers more money to continue to rebuild these levees as they get uh, destroyed by the flood. Eli, what about the issue of reforestation? I mean, that's something that comes up that we plant more trees. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big help. Yeah. So there was a science advances study that came out uh, about I would say nearly a month ago, and a lot of uh, chapters of the Nature Nature Conservancy across the country worked on this study. And basically, um, they looked at all the things um, that, I guess, people who are in charge of land management could do to uh, capture capture carbon emissions. And the top of the list for Missouri was reforestation. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, planting cover crops and avoiding, you know, grasslands conversion. In 15 seconds, John, can you say that that's a good idea? Uh, Yes, reforestation (laughs) would be great. Trees take carbon out of the atmosphere, and long-lived trees like oak will be there for 300 years holding that carbon. Okay, well, that's something else to consider, and we ought to all watch our carbon footprint, shouldn't we? Yes. Thank you very much, uh, both of you. Eli Chen, good to see you, and thank you for being in studio. Uh, St. Louis Public Radio science reporter and John Hickey of the Missouri Sierra Club. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.